What's up YouTube community, Bernd here, welcome back to another lesson video. This week we will finally focus on technique since we already talked a lot about music theory this month. We will take a close look and dissect one of my favorite topics ever, picking technique and playing fast. In this video lesson I want to show you four very different approaches of playing super fast and clean and of course I'd love to hear which one you like the most so make sure to leave a comment on that. So without further ado let's check out the practical example I recorded for you this week. <music> For this demonstration I was playing alternate picking for the first take, economy picking for the second one, then I was switching to hybrid picking and then legato style playing with hammer-ons. I hope that you could hear that there is quite a big difference in sound here, although we are playing the same exact notes and don't change the phrasing or accents. If you have my online course 10 steps to modern shredding, you already know that I am quite obsessed with teaching a super clean and effortless technique. The more approaches you have in your arsenal, so to say, the easier it will be to find the right one for any tricky section. Right now I would like to focus on showing you the advantages and disadvantages of each technique and why you should learn them all. I will also show you how to get started if you never played one of those techniques and what you need to keep in mind when you are practicing these. So let's start with alternate picking. On paper this is the most simple approach we can think of. We are picking every note, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke and so on, always continuing with that motion in this order. The first big challenge obviously is synchronizing the strokes perfectly with the notes your left hand is playing. I'm sure that you came across guitar solos sounding somewhat like that. <laughs> or you tried playing like that for yourself and as you can hear it sounds really terrible. For this bad demonstration I was playing fast with my right hand and tried to somehow keep up with my left hand. The result is quite a mess. The individual strokes are absolutely not connected with the notes I want to play with my left hand and I'm also not really thinking about any subdivisions or note groupings, just playing random notes as fast as I can. If you are very lucky, you might be able to trick some people with that kind of playing in a live situation with tons of gain, but it will hurt your general progress in the long run, so I recommend working on hand synchronization exercises to build that connection. So here's an exercise example for you, so you can get started working on that a little bit more. Remember my general approach of keeping the exercises as small as possible. You will get the best results by that since you can clearly focus on what you're trying to achieve. My recommendation would be to play some very basic and easy free note patterns to a metronome. When you do that focus on every individual note and that will do wonders for your hand synchronization. As soon as you get more comfortable with these exercises you can also speed them up of course. But always focus on playing clean and in time and pay attention to every single note. The next and possibly the biggest challenge is switching between the different strings. Here it gets really tricky and this is where most players get stuck when they try to develop a perfectly clean technique. I recorded a special slow motion example when I was warming up to shoot this video. Listen to how clean the string transition is when the fast playing is slowed down to 50% speed. That is exactly the kind of sound we want with fast alternate picking. With the lick from the demonstration in the beginning, our first challenge with that appears when we switch to the D string. For the first two strings the transition works quite well actually. We play a downstroke for the last note on the E string. Then the first note on the A string is an upstroke. That always felt quite good for me personally since the pick is traveling naturally to where it needs to be for the upstroke. Playing the downstroke the pick is traveling down and it is in the perfect position for the upstroke here on the E string. For this kind of phrase I would prefer an angle where the tip of the pick is pointing away from the guitar so I don't get stuck between the E and A string. Thank you. 
But then the last note on the A string is an upstroke, followed by a downstroke on the D string for the first note. That means that the pick has to move above the A string again. Since we are stuck right now between the E and the A string with the upstroke from the A string. So above the A string and then ready for the downstroke on the D string. And that is the most challenging part with this phrase. And the part where most players get stuck or where there's some kind of unwanted noise coming from the string transition that we want to avoid. Just try playing this phrase really, really slow and you will see exactly what I mean. To eliminate this challenge, you have to master switching between different picking angles. I talk about that a lot in my online courses. But one other way to get rid of the problem is example two, economy picking. <laughs> So this approach is quite new for me personally. I heard about it a lot of years ago, but uh, I just started working on it this week, so quite recently, because I never had time to really check it out in detail. And I was quite overwhelmed with how fluid and easy such phrases become with it. Obviously, I have not mastered it completely yet in such a small amount of time, but it worked really good for the practical example in the beginning already. With this technique, we are essentially combining alternate picking with sweep picking. So for the classic three note per string pattern that we are playing here, we are playing downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, then downstroke again, upstroke, downstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, and so on. So we are always playing. But the really cool thing and what makes this technique stand out is that the last downstroke on every string is locked in the sweep picking position and also serves as the first downstroke on the next string. So there is no separation in movement with those two notes. Here's a slow example of that. As you can see, this can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're already used to playing alternate picking for phrases like that, but it really pays off in the end when you start speeding things up because you get rid of that string transitioning problem. So I personally already got some pretty cool results from studying this technique just a couple of days and can't wait to take it further and see what it has to offer in the future. And since I'm in the position of learning it at the moment, I can already share some of the exercises that helped me the most so far. Um, as always, I'm trying to keep them as small as possible. The exercises have to be simple in the beginning, as we already established, to build the technique from the ground up. So to start, I just practice transitioning from one to the next string, just focusing on one string pair, before playing a whole scale or anything bigger. This is what I recommend for you right now if you've never tried it. And here's an example of that. So as you can see, we are not playing two individual downstrokes here like that. <laughs> pick is locked in the downstroke position, just like it would be with sweep picking for example. And we are playing just one downstroke for both of these notes. As you can see, I get some pretty cool attack on the first note on the next string, because it is a downstroke as we established. If I would play the phrase with alternate picking, be an upstroke and that might lack some of the attack I want for that. So the cool thing is that you will be able to really accent the first note on the next string because it's a downstroke as we established and that could clean up your patterns immensely if you're struggling with that aspect. So let me know if this technique is interesting for you, then I can record play along exercises and another tutorial only dedicated to this topic. Up next are two quite cool examples that focus on the smooth legato approach. First we work with hybrid picking. We play a downstroke on the first string and hammer every note, then pluck the next string with our middle finger and then also hammer every note. Here's how that one sounds when I slow it down. And a little bit faster. So pretty nice and fluid. This exact pattern of downstrokes and finger picking is repeated across all strings. And this is quite an interesting way of playing, I think. I picked that one up at a workshop with the legato master Tom Quayle. If you have never heard of him, you should absolutely check him out. He's an amazing player. 
and it's a super smooth, clean and actually relaxing way of playing since the motion is alternating back and forth and this also helps with nailing the timing for legato phrases at least for me since I'm switching back and forth between those two techniques. So I really recommend trying it out, focus especially on having the same dynamics and attack for both motions. You don't want a super aggressive picking stroke and a very light finger picking motion. So the listener should not be able to hear the difference between those two motions when you speed it up. Again, please keep the exercises as small and basic as possible. Just start out with one string pair and work on phrases like that one, for example. And I'm sure you will get used to it quite quickly. For the last take, I was just playing a downstroke on every string, followed by the hammered notes. So nothing changes for the left hand. It's exactly the same as with the uh, hybrid picking example but we eliminate the finger picking in favor of continuous downstrokes. So when I slow it down, it sounds something like that. Just a little bit faster. And then. So this way of playing is quite common for fast licks and the super smooth legato sound makes it all worth the effort learning it, so make sure to check it out. When you play like that or practice this particular phrase, please make sure that every note is clearly audible and well articulated. Again, you don't want to start out with a super powerful picking stroke followed by barely audible <laughs> hammered on notes. They should all have the same equal volume and articulation. And in the best case, the listener doesn't hear when you're transitioning between the strings and also which notes are picked and which notes are hammered or pulled off. That's it for today's lesson. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I know that we barely scratched the surface on all of these amazing techniques. I just wanted to give you a brief overview so you can decide which one of those you want to perfect further. Make sure to leave a comment to share which approach you like the most, subscribe to stay updated for more free guitar lessons and check out my online course 10 steps to modern shredding to learn much more about all these topics. I will see you in the next video, have fun practicing until then.